Hey everybody, it is Bridget here, standing in Bridget's kitchen, wishing you a wonderful, wonderful day, wherever you are around the world, whatever it is that you may be doing, I hope that you're loving every second of it, because I am loving every second of it, let me tell you for more reasons than one. Firstly, we just got back uh, very, very late last night, we drove from Brisbane um, down to Sydney, which is about a nine and a half, 10 hour drive. We drove straight through, driving through the night, um, coming back to Sydney, because I knew that today was a really, really big day in my kitchen, because in a couple of days time, so on Friday, it's Tuesday today, or was it Wednesday? It's Wednesday today, midweek, oh, it's hump day. And hi to Barb, and hi to Emma as well for joining me. It's hump day, it's Wednesday here in Sydney. Um, and then on Friday, um, so very early Friday morning, we are making our way down to Melbourne for the very last two book launches and cooking masterclasses that we're hosting for the book for more um, for 2019. So we won't start again until January. Decided to give you guys a bit of a break from me because you must get sick of me talking about cooking classes and book launches. So I thought I'd give you guys a bit of a break and come back uh, fresh and new next year. But before that, we've got two more two more book launches and cooking classes to do and they are both happening in Melbourne but I'm afraid I can't even if you if you're watching this from Melbourne I um, mean you haven't got your tickets yet I'm apologize profusely the cast both of those classes and book launches have already sold out which is exciting for us but pretty stink for you so I do apologize for that if you want to come along but you can um, definitely get along to some other classes because we've still got Adelaide here in Australia we've got Adelaide uh, we've got Canberra we've also um, potentially going to be doing a something in Tasmania maybe haven't haven't 100 decided yet so there's a few more classes and then there's Newcastle as well so some more classes coming up but thank you to everyone who's joining me on today's live it is a very cool recipe inspired by our cooking class book launch we did in Taree, which is kind of central uh, New South Wales. Very rural, very beautiful part of the world. And um, oh, thank you, Emma. She just said she'll never tire of watching my videos. Thank you, watching my classes. Thank you. I'm glad you're watching today, Emma. This is an exciting one. And as I was saying, it has been inspired by my trip to Taree. We went and stayed with the beautiful and wonderful um, Rowena in her farmhouse, which was amazing. Her and her husband, Chris, treated us. They spoiled us rotten. It was wonderful. And when we arrived, they had made, they had made us a couple of these, what they called impossible quiches. So it is a quiche. So, you know, lots of egg and stuff like that in there. <clears throat> but traditionally, a quiche has a pastry uh, case around it then you put the egg mixture inside well what they made for us was something without pastry which was amazing and I thought I would then take that and create a Rowena style impossible bacon and egg pie for you guys here pastry free gluten free sugar free and dairy free yeah healthy pie that you could make for dinner you can it makes a big one too you could also make it and slice it up and have it as meal prep you could and what i'm doing with it is i am making it tonight and then i'm cutting it up and we're going to be taking half of it away so making two half of it away with us so we've got um snacks um for the car because we're driving down to melbourne which is about a nine and a half drive hour drive I thought would need some snacks. So this is really versatile food. Great for picnics. Great if you are, you know, you're having a get together with people and it's going to be outdoors. This pie, bacon and egg and possible pie is for you. So thank you to Rowena and thank you to Chris for inspiring today's little cooking class. And this recipe is so new because I just got back. We literally got back at 10.30 last night. I've been in the kitchen today getting ready for Melbourne, prepping up. I haven't written this recipe up yet. You guys are watching it for the very first time. So if you'd like to take some notes, I suggest you go and get a pen and paper now so then you can write the recipe yourself. So the impossible bacon and egg pie. No pastry, no sugar, no dairy, none of that sort of stuff. So come on down to my bench. Let me show you how we get into this impossible pie. And the best thing about it being impossible, it's impossibly easy. It is so easy. It's crazy. It is really great. All right, come on down to the bench. So what we're going to start off with today, we're going to start with a bit of an onion. And I'm going to turn on my, as you can see, I've got my little, my little, um, my little wok here ready to go. And um, I'm going to turn it on. 
and just heat that up to medium. So not too hot, about medium to hot. Just gonna heat my pan up. While my pan's heating up, come back to me. While my pan's heating up, I've got myself a bit of an onion and I'm just gonna start um, chopping that up. It's obviously been peeled. In fact, it's been peeled in advance by my lovely husband. <laughs> Cause he knows I cry. So he does all my peeling for me now. He had a bit of a cry too. I'm not the only one. How good is that? He had a bit of it. He had some tears. Let me tell you, there were tears. I'm not the only one, but he peeled them for me because he loves me. And man, that's that's the that for me is the idea of marriage. Well, someone will do something like peel your onions for you because you they know that you um can't handle them and your makeup and your mascara runs. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? All right, so onion. I'm taking a not a large onion. It's quite a small onion there, and I'm just cutting it into very small dice. We don't want big chunks of onion here. If you struggle with getting your onion into small dice, then there is nothing stopping you from putting your onion, just peeling it, chopping it into you know quarters, and then throwing it inside your little um, your little blender. You know the one I always use, a little little blender. And there's absolutely nothing stopping you from doing that. But as I said, my my husband pre-peeled these for me, so they're not going to make me cry. Isn't he fantastic? So the best way to get that small dice, as you can see, I'm working with half an onion at a time. I've made little incisions across the top of it, like that. But I've kept the root intact, so it's all held together. It just makes it so much easier. And this is also safety as well. And then we're going to cut through the middle. Once again, not going right to the end of the root, because it all stays intact. And then just using my favorite knife. This is like a utility knife. It's nice and chunky. It's very, very light as well. And it's really good for this type of job. Nice and sharp, of course. So our onion just gets chopped up till it's nice and small. Just like that. Don't waste the onion. If you can't eat onion, just leave it out. <laughs> it's not absolutely 100% essential in this recipe, but it is kind of nice. So, onion's done. Let's just move that to the side there. The next thing I need to chop is the bacon portion. Where have I, what have I done with it? Oh, it's right in front of me. Brr. Couldn't see it for looking, as my grandmother would say. Um, I've got three strips of um, a really good quality bacon. This, there's no nitrates on here, so this is a naturally smoked bacon, and it's the streaky. So you can see that we've got some fat marbling through it as well. And it is, you know, I'm not using much. I'm only using three strips of bacon here, three rashers. So because I'm using such a small amount of bacon, you can, you know, go out there and just spend that little bit more. There, you know, you don't need to have half a kilo of bacon in here. So I did go out and I just spent a little bit more on the bacon because I'm only using three rashers. And I think for this beautiful, naturally sm wood smoked, nitrate free, so preservative free bacon, um, I think it only cost me for three for three pieces. This is about three bucks or about a dollar each. So you can kind of do that. Because this dish that we're making will make six to eight portions. So this is that's nothing wrong with that at all. So now we've got our bacon kind of chopped in the same size as our, a little bit bigger than our onions. Over to my pan here. I'm just going to set us up. It's nice and warm. Remember it's been on. You can hear it sort of kind of ticking away there. High sticky sauce. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit of sticky sauce. Couple of tablespoons. A Bridget sticky sauce goes in there. And then follow that off with the bacon and the onions and let it sizzle which is exactly what we want it to do but you see how i kind of have a timing going here i heat this up while i'm chopping this because it doesn't take that long if you put it into your little food process it'll be even quicker so rather than you having to stop and wait for your pan to heat up because i already had it on medium heat and it was right next to me because i always like to work right next to my cooktop I can keep an eye on it, the pan doesn't get too hot, and what we get is we get a hot pan and a quick cooking surface. So onions, bacon is in there. We want to start to kind of caramelize that bacon off a little bit. Get it to be caramelized. Now bacon, there is no need for fat and additional fat in this recipe because remember that bacon had that, that marbled streakiness through it? The fat is now rendering into the onions. Now let's just say that you don't eat ham, you don't eat pork, or you maybe just maybe you don't eat meat. There is nothing stopping you from leaving the bacon out, still doing the onions, but add you know a tablespoon of finely chopped ginger into it. 
just to give it a bit of flavour. And you can do a total vegetarian one here, but this is this is the impossible bacon egg pie. And the only thing that would make it super impossible, if it was an impossible bacon and egg pie with no bacon, that'd be weird, right? So, <laughs> oh, someone just asked, Rebecca, how do you do your sticky sauce? Haven't seen that before. Rebecca, the sticky sauce is probably one of my staples recipes. It is in both my cookbooks. So it's in this cookbook here, Bridget's More from Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. It is also in my very first gut healthy cookbook, which was the bestseller. And of course this one, so the first year the yellow book was the bestseller. This book <laughs> is the award winning book, right? This is the best diet book. Yay! In New Zealand, diet and wellness book for 2019. So that's very, very cool. And sticky sauce is in there. And I use it because I don't add a lot of um, added oils and, and fats to my cooking. I like to get the flavor from that wonderful tamari based sticky sauce. And it's sticky because there's lots of other delicious things in there as well. So Mahei is sitting in front of me. Sorry guys, I can't see some of your messages coming through because I've got eyes in the pan. <laughs> Look at that. If, Mahe, if we've got any questions, Mahei, oh, we do have a question. Thank you, Mahei. Uh, Kim Corkery asks, do you have a particular brand of knives? Do I have, great question from Kim, do I have a particular brand of knives that I use? No, I don't. I'm not particular. But I have to say that this brand here, this is Global, a Global um, Global is the name of the brand, and they do have these really nice um, weighted knives like this. And one thing you'll notice about my knife is that the metal goes right through the handle. It's literally just one piece of metal. It's very comfortable to hold. It's not heavy. I travel all around the world with this knife. Well, wrapped, of course. So I use that. My husband bought me a wonderful Japanese knife. Um, the brand has since rubbed off. Um, so I don't, I'm not particular about knives, but what I do suggest, Kim, is when you are looking to purchase a knife, go into a knife store. Like you can go into a chef store that sells knives and actually pick that knife up and hold it in your hand and really feel how it feels in your hand because a knife has to be comfortable. And you know, for, for myself, this is a nice light knife. If I'm doing a lot of chopping, I might find that I use a heavy, a, heavy, a slightly heavier knife. I'm trying to find it, here it is. Like, sorry, I don't know what this brand is, but I might use something like this. Once again, make sure the metal goes right through the handle. And this is a Japanese knife. Um, very lovely to handle. A little bit heavier than the other one, but works really, really nicely for me. So um, it's up to you brand-wise, but I would definitely suggest you um, talk to the experts and pick it up and hold it in your hand. I mean, this sort of style knife might only set you back about 25 bucks, and it's wonderful, it's so versatile. But this type of knife, I believe my husband bought this for me, it cost about $800. He bought that for me for Christmas about 10 years ago. So it's obviously worth its weight in gold because we're still using it, still using it. All right, you see what we got here now? We have a lovely caramelization happening with the bacon. The onions are cooked through. I'm gonna add a bit of spice to this. And the spice that I'm adding today is my cowboy spice. So this is made up of cinnamon, there is garam masala in here, there is cumin powder in here. And as I've been saying to people who've been attending my book launch where I've used um, my cowboy spice, this is in the first book. My cowboy spice blend is in the yellow book if you've got the yellow book. Um, when I say to people, the reason I, I named it cowboy spice, because I reckon, I've never met a cowboy, but I reckon if I ever did, I'm gonna feed them my cowboy spice because I reckon cowboys would love it. I don't know, it makes no sense whatsoever, right? But there you go. <laughs> All right, cowboy spice is in there. Giving it some flavor, which is really important. All right, that's all the cooking we're going to be doing on the cooktop. So I'm just gonna put that off to the side now because we don't need them anymore. Thank you, you've been wonderful. All we were doing was we were, ma we were cooking the onions, cooking the, the bacon, and yes, you could swap it out with chicken. As I was saying before, you could also leave out the meat and do just a vegetable pie, an impossible vegetable pie. Totally up to you. But what we're going to be doing is we're doing obviously bacon, um, onions, and then we're going to also incorporate some vegetables as well. So that's looking delicious. That smells fabulous, by the way. I'm just going to let it cool down just a little bit. As it cools down, I'm going to do the egg portion. So just a little bowl. I'm gonna break my eggs into the bowl. Remember this does about eight portions. Six to eight portions you can get from this one pie. Um, if it's for you, you, can, you might even get more. It depends on how hungry you are. But I say safely you can get six portions. 
um, you know, for lunch and then add some salad on the side. I'm going to be using six eggs that are going to go into my little bowl. Six eggs. And yes, Tracy, if you're watching, I need some more eggs. Oh, I wish you were close. <laughs> I had to buy these today. I was very, very disappointed. Tracy's got an egg farm, if anyone knows Tracy Waters, who, who's a, a regular watcher and contributor to our community. And she's got her, her very own egg farm. And she bought me a big box, like 15 trays of, of eggs. And I've used them all because that's just what we do, right? <laughs> all right, so um, our eggs are in there. Give them a bit of a whisk just to mix up. You, just got, you want to make sure you have the white and the yolk, oh sorry, yes, the white and the yolk fully incorporated here. Fully incorporated. Yeah, no streaks, that's what we're after, no streaks. So with that feeling pretty incorporated, I'm going to add the next stage to the egg mixture. So taking up my little scales here, you want to measure out some liquid, the liquid portion of this. And the liquid portion that I'm using today, well, what I'm using for liquid is actually, I know it's backwards, but this is organic almond milk that I get from Aldi, making it a dairy-free version. You don't have to use almond milk, you could use um, coconut milk instead. You could use oat milk instead. Um, I don't suggest rice, um, rice milk because it's quite high in carbohydrates, um, but you can also um, use, if you do not mind having dairy. You could use like a lactose-free um, dairy in here. And the other milk that I suggest you should try is hemp milk, if you ever try hemp milk. We're doing a non-dairy version, so I'm gonna be adding almond milk, and I've got my organic unsweetened, it's really important, because if it was sweet, it'd just be weird, like in the pie. So make sure it's unsweetened. I'm gonna put in 200 mils of, of the almond milk the unsweetened organic almond milk just like that 200 mils we're going to add a little bit of salt to the mix as well himalayan salt a bit of pepper good grinding of pepper and once again back over to our whisk just incorporate it incorporate the milk with the egg just like that, easy, huh? Nice and simple. Once you have done that, we're gonna start to, you know, so we're gonna begin to slowly combine all the stuff that we've got. So of course, one of the stuffs that we've got is that. So let's put that into our into a bowl. And um, make sure you scrape down, because all the goodies, all the goodies I cooked onto that. Don't leave anyone behind. Everyone makes it into the bowl if you can. Because this is where the deliciousness happens, right? This is where the deliciousness happens. And you don't want to mess out on any of that deliciousness because we got sticky sauce in there, and we got caramelized onions, and we got fried bacon, and yum, 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 yum. So, you know, let's get it into there. So now that that's in there, I'm going to add a little bit of dry ingredients. Now it's up to you what dry ingredients you decide you would like to use. Um, you can use a gluten-free flour, or if you don't want to use a gluten-free flour, because this has got rice in it, you want to sort of, if you're doing like a low carb, or if you're on keto or anything like that, and you want to make it nice and keto friendly, instead of using our gluten-free flour here, the other alternative to gluten-free plain flour is you could use almond flour or you could use something like this, which is a sunflower seed flour. So let's just say you didn't want to use gluten-free flour, nothing wrong with it, but if you didn't want to use it, good, you could use almond. But if you want to do a nut-free and a rice-free version, you could use sunflower seed flour. And um, that's nothing wrong with that as well. You can get that in the supermarket. You can get it from these the guys, um, Sucrin also do it. Um, who are based in Melbourne, sucrin.com.au and you want to add, what am I going to do today? I'm going to use sunflower flour. I'm going to use it because it smells really nutty. It's really amazing actually, it's really amazing. I'm going to use this sunflower seed flour in here. So it's a nut-free, rice-free um, version. And I'm going to add in, zero it, so we get the right grapple bridge, zero, zero. All right, 100 grams of the sunflower seed. This is going to be such a tasty pie. Can you imagine it? 
it's going to be so tasty and it's going to be a little bit nutty without being you know actually have any tree nuts 100 grams goes in there fabulous with that 100 grams give it a bit of a stir incorporate everything in there I'm also wanting to kind of just you know I want it to hold together a little bit so as well as whatever flour or whatever dry ingredient you decide to put into yours so there's nothing wrong with the old you know gluten-free flour I made it I made one um, out of that the other day and the boys absolutely loved it so I'm gonna add just to hold everything together I'm gonna add in half a teaspoon of xanthan gum I'm gonna go in there as well give that a little bit of a stir and now we're going to think about the vegetable portion and once again it is completely up to you what you decide to add in here for the vegetable option you could do something like grated zucchini you could also um, very finely slice some fennel if you find fennel I have some very limp looking broccolini that's been in my look at that oh I look so sad doesn't he just like kind of look, no feel sorry for him he's been in the fridge for a couple of days so I'm totally gonna add him in there and when it comes like I said when it comes to the vegetables you add whatever you like um, just you know cut them quite evenly and quite small as well just like that I'm not gonna add the stalks I'm just gonna stop probably about there they go into our bowl um, but you want looking for whatever vegetable you try, try um, you decide to use. You could also add mushrooms, you could add tomatoes, you could add cabbage, which I've made one with a cabbage, which was really, really nice. You're after about a, you know, quite a decent sized handful, like a large handful of whatever vegetable you decide to use. So um, I think I'm going to, because this, this fennel, once again, it's been sitting in my fridge for a few days and it needs to be used up. And like this is a, just like a random zucchini that was kind of stuck in there as well. In fact, these are going to go into my nanny's pickles jar. I'm going to cut these up and put them into my pickles. So they're not going to be wasted at all. But let's just very finely slice through our fennel. Nice and fine. You do not want big chunks here. If you struggle to get your fennel really fine, I suggest you either use a mandolin, which is one of those slices, but make sure you use the guard. Don't want to lose any fingertips and that'll get it nice and thin for you as well. So we're gonna throw that fennel in. But as I was saying, you're looking for approximately you know, one decent sized handful of whatever vegetable it is that you decide to throw in. Mix those through, incorporate them really well. We're gonna add a bit of, a bit more seasoning to there, just a little bit of salt. And then taking our egg mixture, taking our egg mixture, let's pour it on top. Right, give it a stir through. And that is pretty much the impossible bacon and egg pie kind of done. Well, it's kind of not done. It needs to be cooked now, doesn't it? But this is the mixture that you have here. And if you're finding that you're getting a few lumps, you know, just get out the old whisk and kind of mix that through so it's really well incorporated. And then what you want to do is think about what you want to cook it in um, because you know it's kind of a pie slash quiche you could do it in one of these types of quiche dishes which works really well um, but you need to give it just a light greasing so I've got a little bit of coconut oil here that I'm using to grease the um, very gently grease and I'm using a pastry brush rather than tipping it in because you don't need much look at that just one little dip neat done and then using your pastry brush give it a really good overall with the coconut oil this is going to help a little bit more just a tiny bit more this is going to help it to not stick once it comes out of the oven and yes we are baking this in the oven and we're going to be baking it in the oven at a hundred no yes uh, yes it is 180 degrees 180 degrees which is a medium oven and 350 degrees fahrenheit so that goes in like this and you have already something looking pretty fabulous. But I'll tell you what else you can do to make it pretty fabulous. Is if you wanted to. There is nothing stopping you from at this point in time. If you don't mind a bit of dairy, a bit of cheese. Of grating some cheese over the top. So you can totally do that with your grater. You can also do something like this. Which I suggest. Totally suggest. Is grab yourself up some fresh herbs. You're probably wondering when's she gonna actually start adding herbs she always adds herbs yes I'm gonna be adding fresh herbs to the top 
of my impossible bacon and egg pie. I'm just gonna very, very, um, you know, carefully chop through it. And that can just get sprinkled on top there. I'm using basil, but um, there is nothing stopping you from using chives, or you could use parsley, or you know, anything you like really. Um, to go on top, if you really love your coriander, you could finally chop some coriander and put that in. And then just a little bit of cheese if you are going to use a bit of dairy. Um, you can also get vegan cheese if you're completely you know, wanting to do a vegan job on this. Uh, leave out the meat and add vegan cheese that you can buy now quite readily available in the supermarket. And it does melt a little bit. The majority vegan cheese is made primarily from coconut, coconut oil. Um, so you do get a little bit of a browning and a, and a melting happening. Obviously nothing like cheese. Nothing like cheese. Um, so if you wanted to add cheese, you add cheese. If you don't want to add cheese, don't add cheese. In fact, the alternative if you don't want to add cheese or you don't want to add vegan cheese is sprinkle it on the top just before it goes in the oven. Sprinkle it with nutritional yeast. Now nutritional yeast is completely vegan. It is got. Um, it's made from made from yeast, <laughs> and it's not like like baking yeast. It's totally different from that. But nutritional yeast has a very nutty, almost parmesan quality to it, and it's just a little light sprinkle that you put on top. So um, once you've done that, you're happy with it. Maybe you want to finish off with a little bit of pepper, whatever it is. And now you just rush on over to your. Well, don't rush. Walk walk slowly. There's no need for panicking. Pop that into the oven, that will then cook in the oven for 25 to 30 minutes. Keep an eye on it. What will happen is it will start to pull away from the sides there and you'll actually get it rising a little bit. It'll pull away from the sides and you'll get a wonderful pie looking quality. I'll show you because you know what I've done in the past, right? Here is one I made earlier. <laughs> so the first thing I want to point out to you guys about this is I actually cooked everything in one pan. So um, I didn't transfer it to a pie dish because what I have here, and you might have it too, have a look in your have a look in your um, cupboards, is I have a frying pan with a metal handle, which means my frying pan can go straight into the oven. So I actually started the bacon and the onions here. I added the, I added the sticky sauce, you know, I added the cowboy spice, did all that, mixed up my eggs and my vegetables, and then incorporated it all into here. And I'm hoping that it's gonna pop out. I don't know yet, haven't tested the theory. It's always a good time to, <laughs> to test it live, isn't it? Yeah, we'll see what happens. All right, bit of a spatula. My favorite spatula, because look how bendy it is. This is just the best spatula ever. So, just gonna work my spatula around the edges of the pan, and hope that what is gonna happen is that it doesn't stick to the base of the pan. If it does, who cares, right? Who cares if it does? Whoa, here it comes, look at that, it's coming out. Oh my gosh, ta-da! <laughs> Yay! That's the first time I tried it. That actually worked. It doesn't always work. I'm really glad it worked this time. Okay, it's a bit hot. It's only been in the, coming out of the oven about 20 minutes ago. I'm just going to pick it up so you can see what it looks like on the bottom. Hey, it's come out really nice, huh? So that is the, the well, this is the Impossible Pie. And it's up to you, as I was saying before, how you decide to serve it. My son wants me to serve it directly into his mouth because he's sitting opposite me now looking at it and he's starving. He's, you know, he's 15, he's always hungry. But it's up to you how you serve it. You know, it's perfect, I was saying, for picnics or, or if you've got, you know, you've got a party that you want to go to and you want to take something super healthy and super easy to make. Also, really good on a budget too because it's literally just six eggs and some milk. Well, you know, some, some dairy-free milk. You can do that sort of thing and get this fabulous looking, woohoo, impossible pie. Look at that wonderful, it's almost crust-like on the, well, it is, it's like a crust, but there's no pastry in there whatsoever. And this one I actually did make with gluten-free flour. So just in case you're wondering what that looks like. So I'm going to portion it up for you guys. Remember you can get six to eight portions. So in this half, I'm actually going to get quarters. I'm going to get quarters in this half so you can see what that looks like. So there is that wonderful quarter of that beautiful, impossible bacon and egg pie that we've made there. If you wanted to get it into threes, you still cut a quarter that way, but you want to get that half into three slices. What you do 
is then instead of cutting it, you know, you act, I always work with half of, of whether it's a cake or a pie. I don't try and you know work with the whole thing. I literally work with half. And now that I've cut it in half, my ability to a lot more easily cut it into three happens just like that. And now I've got three slices of that pie. And then up here, I've got absolutely perfect quarters from that end. So there you go. That is how you, well, that's how you cut a pie for a start. Oh, having a taste. Mm, it tastes pretty good. It's very exciting. Um, so there you have, let's get a slice. There you have the impossible pie. Um, that is well, the impossible bacon and egg pie. Thank you to Rowena and Chris for the inspiration. The inspiration when we read our book launch. Thank you for joining me tonight. Do not forget, you can still get your copy of more. It is still available. You can also still get your copy of Bridget's Healthy Christmas, which is 50 festive recipes for Christmas and the party season. That uh, link, I think Mahay's gonna throw up for you guys now. The link, if you wanna purchase your copy of more, if you purchase a copy of more now, um, especially if you live in Australia, it will get to you before Christmas. We still have a good amount of time for delivery. Not sure, sure about the internationals, but definitely um, for uh, definitely for the uh, local um, audience, you can you'll be able to get your copy of more before then, and it's more from Bridget.com. Of course, join the competition because you get to win. I'll go into draw in the draw to get a foodies weekend with me in Sydney, um, spending a couple of days eating, drinking, shopping, and doing all the awesome, awesome, awesome stuff that comes along with it. And just a little a little secret for you guys who are still watching. My hate doesn't know you this yet, so it's just between us. If I whisper, he can't hear me. Starting on December the 13th, on December the 13th, I will be doing 12 cooking days till Christmas. So I'll be doing my top 12 cooking hints, tips, and classes every single day right up to Christmas Eve, starting on December the 13th, right here in my kitchen. Make sure you join me for that. Make sure you come back and see more of this wonderful food that we're doing. Um, and enjoy your impossible bacon and egg pie. All right, guys. Love you and leave you. It's time for dinner. Yay. Take care and we'll talk soon. Bye.